looking at me. You're looking at me this way. And when you when you want to uh, feel free to gesture, but what I'm going to do is when you turn back to me, I want to turn your head so that your eyes are a little bit in the sun. Like that, right? Yeah. Talk to yes. you or talk to the camera? Talk to me. Okay. Talk to me. And feel free to gesture and move around as much as you want. Don't feel constrained by this. But our baseline is pretty much right here where you got, you know, you can count on it. If your eyes are uncomfortable, you're looking the right way. No. <laughs> so Marie, let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, here okay. we are. We're in a parking lot. We're right beside a parking lot here. Folks walk by this spot every day. A lot of people don't know the history they are walking by here. Tell me a little bit of it. Lindy, this is one of the oldest buildings in Savannah. And uh, uh, my father, Bo Peep, bought this property back in about uh, 1939. He'd been a tenant there for several years and he arranged, saved up some money, finally bought the property. And uh, it was, at that time, it was a four-story building. And he had uh, an office here, a rental office here. So it was been right here? Yeah, right, here right on this corner, corner, corner. Was, a, was a real estate rental office. And then as you went in, the, uh, Bo Peeps actually began about right here. And it was this entire frontage that you see from here to this, at that time, it was the Savannah Bank Building. Mm -hmm. I mean, excuse me, the Savannah Hotel. Savannah Hotel. The Savannah Hotel. A lot of folks will know that building later is the Manger Hotel. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, you walk about 25 paces, and that would be the, the uh, double door entrance to the, what we call the lunch room, the, the lunch counter, where we served those, uh, the world famous Bo Peeps roast beef sandwiches, which really became well known all over the world. Best roast beef sandwich I ever tasted anywhere. So is it possible to recreate that roast beef sandwich or, or is it Probably, lost? probably not because what, what happened, Lindy, was uh, he had a Greek chef who was very prominent in Savannah by the name of Chris Batsios. Chris still has many members of his family uh, live in this community. And Chris came in and developed the sandwich in about, I guess, 1935, somewhere right back in there, 36 in that time. And uh, it was the best roast beef. What they did, they, they had the roast beef flown in from Chicago through the Armour Packing Company. And, and just coincidentally, as the people say, coincidentally, uh, Joe Mendel, who was my uncle, my mother's brother, he was the manager of Armour. <laughs> and so he, he arranged for Bo Peep to get the finest cut of roast beef anywhere in the country. And so we, it was flown in, it was usually about 40 pounds. And then they would take it and they roasted it in a specially designed oven, which at that time was the first one in the city with the a Pyrex glass door so you could watch, watch that the, uh, the cooking going on. And they served it with a very thick, wonderfully delicious flavored brown gravy. He used a lot of the drippings from the meat and it was just absolutely delicious. Served it on your choice of bread, Gottlieb's bread incidentally. Gottlieb's Bakery was the number one bakery in, the, in Savannah in those days. They're gone now, unfortunately. But that's what, that's what that sandwich was all about. Yep. Behind the lunch kitchen, we had a bar. And of course, the bar became famous because under Georgia law, the Christ Church, you couldn't have a, you could not s sell alcohol in Georgia within 100 feet of a church. That's an old Georgia law. And it was on the books at that time. So what we did is we measured it by the way the crow flew. <laughs> and uh, the bar wound up back here on the corner where you see right here now, that was the bar right there. And where that explorer sits. And now. yeah, and you had to enter the bar through the Congress alleyway. <laughs> you see, because the law says you couldn't have it here. Yeah, yeah. 
So we had a beautiful mahogany bar, just absolutely gorgeous. And you, on, a, on a good St. Patrick's Day, you could probably put maybe 40 people in there. Yeah. Next to the bar <laughs> was the pool room facility. And we got a picture we'll, we'll talk about in, in, the, in the pool room. Yes. But let's set up a little bit. Try to get get an idea, give, it, give people an idea of what Bo Peeps meant in this in this community. What a center this was, Lindy. During uh, you know, and it, this really gets to me because you know the people in Savannah, Georgia, came to Bo Peeps not to gamble. Some of them gambled. Not to drink and carry on, some of them drank, but they came for the community atmosphere and the fact that you could go there any time of the day, from the time they opened the doors at 8 o'clock until they closed at midnight, and you could always find somebody there that you could talk to. And that person would be as interested in whatever you had to say. It didn't matter what you were talking about. You could talk about baseball, football, women, basketball, liquor, the, the Savannah pol political scene, the whole thing. But you always could find somebody there to talk with, sit down, have a cup of coffee, and spend an hour. For the real athletes in the crowd, they'd get up and they'd shoot pool, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it was a place that you could come and visit, you could relax, you'd enjoy yourself, and if whatever you wanted to do, you could do that. And Lindy, the, the beautiful part about it is that for many, many years, uh, Bo Peep was the number one bookmaker in the South. Now, a bookmaker is an individual who takes bets on football game, basketball game, and uh, baseball games. And as a result, you could come in and bet anything you wanted to bet, from one dollar to any amount that you could count. That was, his, that was his slogan. You can bet any amount that you can count <laughs> on any game that you can name. That was his slogan. And you could do that. So you'd come in, you'd bet, you'd sit down, and in those days, of course, we had the broadcast of the games on the radio. Uh, Dizzy Dean was doing some of the broadcasting for Falstaff there in those days. You recall, I'm sure, vividly, the incredible Wendy Heron who broadcast oh, yeah. for years on WTOC in Savannah. The play-by-play, -play, the reconstructed play-by-play, -play, so that it was a place to go and relax and enjoy yourself and have a good time. All right, let's do something now. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we're. That, what do you want to do? Well, we can. We can, Robert. You can. You can hold this for me. All right. I got. It. We can hold this. We can set this up here like that. How about that? Right, that'll work. And then you want to move this all together? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. All right, Bob, all right, let's take a look. Let's take a look, Murray. A lot of faces. A lot of faces in here. Point out the first one that pops to you. Lindy, you of course, the first one that pops to me is the little man himself. That's Bo <laughs> Peep. This individual standing here holding the cue stick is the great Willie Moscone, that who at that time was the world champion in the billiard business, in, in the billiard, billiard world. And right here is a, is a young man whose name is Paul Kehoe. Paul's a full brother to Bill Kehoe that owned the Kehoe Tire Company in Savannah for many years. This good-looking young man right here is the great Morris Levy, who owned the man's store on Broughton Street, right up backing up to Bo Peeps. You could go from Morris Levy's man's store to Bo Peeps just by crossing the Congress <laughs> Alleyway. Uh, this, this individual over here is Saul Lesser. Saul owned a, owned a, a woman's shop here in, in Savannah for many, many years. This one here is Bo Peep's full brother, who we talk about in the book, uh, Isidore Gully Silver, who was the manager of the bar. That's Gully right there. This, this good-looking individual down here is uh, Reuben Cooley, standing right here talking to Gully. And of course, we have a lot in the book about Reuben Cooley. 
Those are some of the individuals that I can recall right now. This and as you, about 1940, isn't that what This is about 1940, and this photograph we should give credit to the Savannah Historical Society the because that's where we got the photograph from. So how many hours do you think you spent in that pool room? I guess, Hello. is he still with me? Yeah, yeah. I guess um, I would spend uh, a couple of hours a day, probably three days, four days a week as I got older. As I went into Benedictine, that's really when we started frequently there. And uh, Benedictine would, uh, uh, I was my high school years, and I would spend a couple of hours a day, every three or four days, to come in simply to watch, to see what was going on, to talk to the people, and to meet people. And that was one of the things that I was blessed with because no matter who came in there, my dad, they would come up and say, I want to see Bo Peep. And he, of course, he would come right up and shake hands with everybody, never met a stranger. And he, he would, I would be sitting there listening to a baseball game or watching a pool game or something. And uh, as a result, he would call me over. And he would say to me, uh, as an example, Joe DiMaggio, when DiMaggio came in, we cover that in the book. When DiMaggio came in, he took me up and he says, he says, I want you to meet the great Joe DiMaggio. Well, of course, my eyes popped open to, to meet in person the Yankee Clipper. You know, it was unbelievable because we were raised as Yankee fans. And uh, it seems odd now, but, but things were so different. Baseball-wise, things were so different. I mean, you find a lot of Reds fans around here, too because of radio signals yes. years ago, you know, who you could listen to and who you couldn't had a lot to do with, with, with uh, aligning with baseball teams. Yes, and that was the same thing true with uh, Dizzy Dean. That's, that chapter in the book about in Dizzy Dean is, is a classic, really. And uh, Dizzy Dean was one of the great sports figures of all time. Some people still say he's probably the greatest pitcher that ever lived. And he was one of the nicest people in the world, and I loved meeting him. And at the same time, at the same time, Lindy, the infamous people who came to town, who came to Bo Peeps and had lunch and visited and stayed at the Savannah Hotel, the infamous people that I met, Frank Costello, the godfather of all godfathers, Frank Costello, Maya Lansky, the chairman of Murder Incorporated. I mean, he would visit Savannah every winter, going south to Miami. He owned a home at Miami Beach. Um, I want to I look at that other picture. I got two more shots I want to take a look at here. First of all, you got the BC hat on. This, uh, this picture from 1945. Bob. Murray, this picture from 1945 is very cool. All right, I know you, I recognize you. Tell me some of the other folks here. Lindy, um, as you can see, this is from my personal scrapbook that I made back in 1945 when I was the cheerleader, the lead cheerleader at Benedictine. And this is my picture right here. This lovely lady right behind me is Mary Miller. Jack Landers, who was a classmate. <coughs> then this here is Matilda Laird. Matilda's claim to fame is that she married Jack Stacy, and her daughter was the great Hollis Stacy, one of the great women golfers in, in America. This young fella right here was Lefty Ward. This lady is Betty Gilbert, and this is Alex Barbie, who inherited the Barbie fortune out on Isle of Hope, and that's Alex Barbie, and the lady bringing up the end was Patty Barrigan. These, this was a group of cheerleaders, and in those days, we had something to cheer about. 
Oh, in 1945, it was a tie game, huh? I can see the one no, the one score on here, BC Savannah High. BC Savannah High was a nothing to nothing tie in 1945. <laughs> and when we left that stadium, the old Grayson Stadium, and we came downtown, we had the bonfire at Bull and Broughton Street. And uh, Lindy, there were over a hundred fights. That's how bad oh, yeah. It was between Benedictine Cadets and the Savannah High School Blue Jackets. Now those games were played at Thanksgiving at that point, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that was the Thanksgiving game. That was the Thanksgiving game, and, and today, if you talk to most politicians today, they'll tell you that the, the years of 45, 46, and 47 was probably the greatest argument to discontinue the Thanksgiving ball game because <laughs> it was, was, it was real absolutely, it was a hatred. I mean, really and truly, honest to God, the people today have no idea what happened in those days. I mean, for two weeks prior to that game, a, a high school person wouldn't speak to you. They wouldn't speak to BC people. And the same thing was true with us. I mean, we wouldn't even talk to them. It was that, the hatred was that bad. And of course, Poor BC, we never really had much of a football team. We had a real small school, and we never really had much of a football team. And Savannah High School, as you know, was, was big, always big was always a big school. And uh, they usually took the good measure of us. But I think that's why the resentment built up, and it wound up as a brawl in the streets. We got one more picture I want to talk about. And this picture, Bob, this picture really tells the story here. And I'm going to let you tell me the story. I'm sorry. What? All right. Can you get that very clear? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so what's going on here, Marie? Lendy, this see? photograph, we should give proper recognition. This is a photograph from the Savannah Police Department. This good-looking young fella here is Detective Ed Fitzgerald. Now, this is one of the occasions in which Fitzgerald and his, his associate detective came in and raided Bo Peeps. Because Some, somehow, though, it seemed like they never found anything, Murray. How did that happen? They, the, how it happened was that somebody in authority would call Daddy and tip him off and say, the, the boys are coming in about 1 o'clock. So Daddy would go on and clean out all the bets and all of the evidence of bets and illegal transactions, and it would be clean. Yeah, and these fellas would come in, and they would find punch boards, and that type of insignificant paraphernalia. And then the next day, the Savannah Morning News would have a headline story, Big Raid, Crisis Gambling Operation. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the, in a day or two, somebody from Bo Peeps would go down, appear in the city police court, usually before Judge Emanuel Lewis, plead guilty, be fined $50 or $100 with the admiration, don't do that again. Don't violate the laws of Savannah. Well, they didn't. They'd wait 24 hours and start in again. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. That's everything I need. We got a lot out of this, didn't we? Now, what is this product? What's the sales sheet here with the little woman? I can't even tell what it is. Inventory. They yeah. make an inventory of all the stuff they yeah. found. Uh, this is an example of the type of evidence that they found. These items that you see here are punch boards that you'd come in, you'd, take, you'd pay a nickel or a dime, and you'd punch a, a little hole. And this is predominantly, as you see, what they found. Yeah. None of the real evidence. None of the real evidence. Yeah. None of the gambling transactions. Yeah.